well, good morning. Um, thank you for inviting me to your talk. I'm two slots here. <clears throat> I'm unfortunate that my voice is going a little bit, so forgive me. Um, this is my keynote, and this is very different than the talk we gave the other day. Um, there's two differences between a technical talk and a keynote. Um, at a technical talk, I have to actually give like facts and stuff like that. Um, at a keynote, I get to give kind of my own opinions. Um, the other difference, of course, is that I need to wear a tie. Oh. <laughs> uh, I mean, since Dan's not wearing his, so I'm... Okay, so hi, welcome to my keynote. Um, this talk is all about some stuff you need to know to live and work in the open source world as a developer or a user, because we know both communities are presented here, um, of tools, libraries, and applications, because in fact we have all three of those here too. And in fact, we, as we go through this document, we have two more classifications. There's developers, there's users, uh, there's sponsors, and we have four things we'll get to. Who am I? Um, I've talked to some of you, and I started out an introduction uh, the other day, but I'll talk to you over here. I'm an ex-compiler uh, junkie. Um, I went to grad school doing airports computing back when you know, so computing and pray and stuff was all rage. Um, that's all dead now for the most part. So I switched over to Cheeto. Uh, I worked for a company called Lizard Tech for over 10 years. Um, I left uh, last winter, retired as a director of the engineering team there, uh, to start my own business as an independent consultant, focusing on open source and technology and geospatial awareness specifically. I've been doing open source for 20 years by my account, and that means that I started back in graduate school. Um, before the term open source really was even known to And again, this was before I was in the geo world. But I will note um, that one of the oldest mainstream open source applications out there is from our world, in Jupyter. Do you agree with Maybe it was grass. Grass is like 20 plus years old. It started as a early project. It's got a long, long history. Grass was doing open source before open source was doing it. Uh, there we go. User, developer, sponsor, and advocate. That was the fourth category. I filled all four of those, which we'll be talking about today. Uh, I'm also a charter member of OSGEO. Have you heard of OSGEO? Okay. I'm going to mention a little bit about OSGEO, what it is, what we do. Um, that's kind of the premier entry point to the open source world of Jupyter. Um, two disclaimers. These are all opinions. As I said, I'm not sure fast. It's the keynote. Um, your opinions may differ, uh, and that's probably okay. It depends on how much you differ. Some of you already know this stuff. A lot of you have been working in the open source world for some time now, um, and that's probably okay too. Um, we're going to assume that there's somebody out there who doesn't know this stuff, because I think hope anyway that at least something, one of the points I'm to the university of each one of the next half hours. So just to be brief, um, as a third point, I know it's early, um, but feel free to stop and interrupt me ask questions. I've got, I believe, extra time here. Uh, so if something can say strikes a chord, I'm curious to know more, just feel free to show up. In three easy steps, um, I'm going to go over how to find the project you need, how to get help using that project, and then how to get involved in the open source world for that specific project. And I'm not talking here about you know what uh, source of control system to use or heaven help us what editor to use. I'm talking more kind of cultural. I'm also going to talk at the beginning about why open source is a good thing and kind of try to summarize as what is the big deal. Why do we care about this? What motivates us? But we can't really talk about why open source is a good thing um, usefully. Um, that's a whole other talk. A lot of people have written books on this. Um, there's lots of stuff. You can see some minuses talks. Uh, YouTube. In our geo world, I have things like Paul Ramsey's talks, specifically about support yourself in business. You can go and Google on the work on, for keywords like Unix, BSD, GCC, Emacs, Free Software Foundation. Um, 
Arbes, which is Richard David Stallman, probably going to be approved. Uh, he's the founder of one faction of the open source world. Um, he coined the term copyright that we Linux, Apache, and Firefox, of course, those are perhaps the three biggest, most well known, and widely used open source packages out there. RAS, as I mentioned, um, and MapServer and GDAL both have long story and histories, unbelievably widely used. Frank Waterdown, uh, who was the developer of GDAL originally, um, worked in commercial business for a while and then went off to kind of do his own thing and write this library. He had this idea that he could write the library and use it. I think he, but I know at the time he did it, he thought, oh, everybody can use this, he would want to get home and make everything he would turn out And if he had a name for the top of the GDL, it was shipped inside somebody else's application, he didn't want to put it up. Now, uh, finally, um, for keywords about why open source is such a good thing, they can mention Creative Commons Wikipedia and the street I imagine everybody here knows what Wikipedia is. You probably already know what OpenStreetMap is. If you don't, you should. Um, it's the only source of widely available, uh, reusable content of its other. And of course, Creative Commons, uh, which is a, essentially a licensing scheme uh, that allows you to redistribute stuff on open source. We'll talk a little bit about licensing. So we're just going to take it that open source is a good thing. But we can't talk about open source without using the idea of freedom. Um, people talk about freedom in speech and freedom in gear. Those represent the two factions of the open source world. And they correspond to the two licensing ideas. And again, I'll talk about this in a minute. Um, there's a lot of questions, though. The open source world um, is not from fame to life. Um, free does not necessarily mean good, uh, and there are dangers of it. There's free as in speech, free as in beer, and as so many famously said, free as in bugs. <laughs> Dad, you might take it home and keep it. Um, our dog, Chick Pundy, just had puppies, and we can't feed them. So stop on by, have some tea, and take them on puppy. Adopting an open source library for your application, if done without careful foresight, you um, be like it. How many of you read? We are copyright that is from the open source world. I really haven't read it. As is, disclaimed, not limited to, in no event, up to including negligence. This is scary stuff, right? You're trying to write applications that um, in, you know, are doing water models, um, you're looking at flooding, um, you're looking at where to site power lines. You know, this is stuff that has impact. People in Europe using licenses like this? What are you nuts? Yeah. Have you ever read the license that comes with that other stuff? Hey, that's where I'm going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was able to write for 10 years. Um, one of the responsibilities that somehow I had was to uh, keep track of our legal um, our legal documents, our reviews, our duties, and that stuff. Um, and I would put that lawyer, and there's scary stuff. In fact, I got bit myself to show that. I'm going to put this up here to mention that. That lizard tech we released an SDK um, with a Mr. Sid format to allow you to do compression. Um, it is not open source, but we allow you to freely download, freely compile the library, and freely redistribute. And I had worked with lawyers to make sure that was all pretty clear. And we did that in part to be very believable, like Frank, so that GDAO. Would be distributed in Mr. Sid Lightness because that was good for his plan. So I go off on my own and I'm doing a project where I have to actually benchmark um, some technology that I was playing with against the stuff we had to do. So I downloaded the music text, um, packaged the stuff that I helped write, uh, installed it, and looked at the EULA as I was waiting for it to install. I was just pushing to see if they changed it since I left with that to get the EULA to see if they Gone. Um, well, either I missed it or they slipped it in after I left. There's a line that says you can't republish, you can't publish benchmarks based on our numbers. Now, this is actually a fairly common thing. Like, you get some nice software this way, Oracle, and some of the big database vendors that can take the task off the If you download some of their stuff, you can't, according to the agreement, you click through 
here, yes, I agree. You can't uh, publish a result that says, hey, you know what, post just is faster than work. So your point is well taken and exactly right. Um, this is big, scary stuff, this license. But in fact, um, you're probably already doing stuff for your existing proprietary uh, software that you shouldn't be doing. You can think about these things. So there are dangers in the open source world. There are dangers in breaking Okay, into the meat of it. How to find the project that you need. How many of you have seen a picture like this before? It's pretty easy, it's been from a few years ago. This is what's come to be called the long tail source page. Anyone want to take a guess how many projects, how many open source projects are represented in SourceForge right now? 20,000. Okay, 20,000. Anybody else? One. But it's somewhere between them. <laughs> 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 um, it's it's uh, between two and four hundred thousand. I'm writing that. So as of a couple years ago, I think it was two some, I think it's four some. Uh, in fact, that number is probably low because SourceForge, um, if you've been around this for a few years, SourceForge uh, used to be kind of the go to place for all open source practices, and others just get up in the place. So, yeah, you add up all of the major open source hosting sites and post out of projects. Okay, Linux is over here. Okay, I didn't label the axes. This is number of projects, this is a histogram. Number of projects <coughs> versus number of users. So, there are a bazillion users of Linux. Somebody's pre-beta stamp collection kit is way down there at the end, and it has exactly one and a half users. He and my mom who downloaded it to try to see what he was doing. Uh, <laughs> and it's only available in Slovak, and it only works in Revision, which does in 2003. Um, that's the long tail of source for it. So you go out there and you say, hey, I want this easy thing on the app. And there's a million of them to choose from. You don't want to be on the right hand side of that curve. You want to be on the left. And how do you know the difference? How many of you have an issue like this before? You see some cool thing and you say, wait, maybe this will be so cute when you do that. Does it work under Windows 7? And somebody replies, sure, no problem. And so this one so, wait, hang on. Um, no, uh, but there's a patch that you can get. <laughs> okay. And then two days later, after you've tried to apply that patch and then relax, and goes, oh, no, sorry, hang on. That was for an early release, which may not be available anymore. Um, and then they say, oh, well, you know what? If you make this change here and modify this pattern, right? Oh, and download this Windows SDK, I bet you can get it to build yourself. Okay? This is not what we want. This is a lot of fun if you're um, a grad student and have some free time and you want to But this is not how we ship real software. In the production environment, you can't do this. So here's some key hints for you. How do you know? If the package that you want is stable and supported enough that you can rewind. Here's another tip. Pasting some source code into the blog post is not big in the search How many of you apply to the open source projects that you rely on? How many of you apply to Mapper? Um, these are not rules. These are indicators. Um, where is the project hosted? Is it on GitHub, Google Code, Google X, SourceForge? If it's hosted on a major site like that, okay, somebody's actually making it. If it's just a random bunch of code, you know, that somebody's hanging off their blog, that's not good. <coughs> Do they have a bug tracking system that's publicly available that's ideally part of their hosting system, like SourceForge and support that? They have source control. They have pre-built binder binders. They have very clear licensing terms stated up front. Okay, none of these are required to be open source. Well, licensing terms. But if you look at these things, you're going to have a lot better luck. Than 